Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Very excited to introduce the, the next panel. At Facebook, our mission is to bring the world closer together and create community. And I can't think of a better way of doing that than through gaming. Every time I have an opportunity to watch friends gather together, most recently we have the Oculus Go um, at Facebook and we have brought a bunch of people together um, to see their faces, their enthusiasm and the discussion that occurs and it's an amazing opportunity to create community. Today's panel is a bit more specific about women in the gaming industry. So there are roughly two billion gamers in the world, half are roughly women. And if you think about the conversations leading up to E3, when we looked on Facebook, over 40%, 44% of the conversations were being led by women. And yet, less than a quarter of women are actually in the gaming industry. So it's an important topic for us to get behind, to figure out how to better represent women, whether they be female characters or women in the actual gaming development or on the business side. We're deeply committed to bringing more diversity into the industry. We have partnered with, yes, there we go. And by the way, all the men that are here are getting extra special credit. So thank you for being part of the conversation because often I do a lot of women's events around the world and often um, it's women talking to women and we really, really need men in this conversation. It's a real people discussion. And as I've said, if you don't think it's the morally the right thing to do to have diversity and inclusion, then it's at least the business right thing to do given how important women are um, to this industry and frankly to all industries. So at Facebook, we've partnered uh, with E3 and at the ESA booth, we actually have an area where you can film and we really want to hear different voices. We launched an initiative around women in gaming in the last year and it's under the hashtag she talks games and it's really about bringing women's voices and making sure that we are being heard it's around celebrating the diversity bringing tools and best practices and hopefully uplifting the amount of women that are in the industry so we invite you to join us to share your voice um, at that booth at the ESA and without further ado I want to introduce our very special panel so we have three people we have a moderator um, you might know her already she's been very active She's the co-founder of the podcast, What's Good Games, and she's been a host and producer at our Facebook booth live at E3, and that is Andrea Renee. So please welcome Andrea Renee. Hi. I'm back. She's got the coolest shoes I've seen. <laughs> um, Sarah Lynn Smith. Um, is joining us. She runs community development and publishing operations at Blizzard Entertainment. She's worked on World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Starcraft 2, Diablo. You have a whole list of games. A warm welcome. And we have Laura Bailey here, who is the voice actress for anime, video games, and original animation. She's most known for her work on Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, Halo 5, Guardians, and Gears of War 4. And uh, we welcome her, and she's a very close to having a baby, which we're very <laughs> excited about. So join us on stage. So this is a panel of women, but it is for people. And so thank you to all that joined the conversation. And I'm going to turn it over to our special guest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we can give her a round of applause. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, well, thank you, everybody, for uh, who is joining us here um, at the Novo and to everybody who is watching on the stream on, on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we will be uh, hopefully be taking some questions from you guys. Again, that's hashtag E3 Coliseum on our Facebook stream if you guys are interested in asking us any questions. But, ladies, thank you so much for joining me here today. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you know, just hanging out. <laughs> Great to be invited. Yeah. What's great about what uh, Facebook has done with the She Talk Games initiative is really kind of highlight, as Carolyn was talking, not just um, women in traditional game dev roles, but the idea that there are all types of opportunities for women to get involved in, in tech and gaming yes, that yeah. aren't just, you know, you know, game developer or, you know, like someone like me who works in the press and talks about games, right? Yeah. And, and Sarah Lynn, you've been working in games for, for quite some time. Like kind of, what was you, what, you know, one of your first roles that you got involved with? Yeah, I've been at Blizzard for about six and a half years now. And um, I hadn't worked in the games industry before. 
I don't know if you saw me walk in. I'm very tall. A lot of my experience has actually been in sports. Um, but things like organizational development, business development, marketing, I mean, those are all skills that you need even with game development. Um, so yeah, I've been uh, the head of community development at Blizzard and we have you know social media managers. There's, there's lots of roles for women um, in games, be it uh, you know project management, um, also graphic design related. It could be for web and mobile or marketing, not just for the games. And so uh, yeah, I want to just encourage and get the word out there that uh, you know from the operational and support side of, of employment opportunities, there's tons out there and we want more women. Yes, as many as possible. Uh, Laura, you've been in so many video games. It was nice of her to highlight just a couple of them, but <laughs> your resume of the voices that you've done is really, really impressive. But you're not just an actor. You also are a player. I am, yeah. I, I love video games. I grew up on them. I started, you know, when I was, oh gosh, I don't even want to say how young, but um, playing like King's Quest, all the Tierra games. I was obsessed with them and I still am obsessed with RPGs. You got a woot out in the audience. A, woot, a King's <laughs> Quest woo? A woot for King's Quest? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually one of the first games. Quest for Glory, Shadows of Darkness was one of the first games I ever played that made me recognize voice acting and want to get into that. And then I found out it was the character that I loved was voiced by Jen Hale. Oh. Well, there you yeah, go. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, well, and now I'm working with you. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and we kind of had a fun um, reveal for a role that you are heavily involved in yeah. uh, on Sunday at the Xbox press conference. Who was there or who watched it? Yeah, it was Most really good. Of, of course, okay. the Gears guys in the back are already here. <laughs> Spoilers, I just I just announced it for you. But uh, Kate is back yeah. in Gears 5. How exciting. Oh, my gosh. I'm so stoked about it. It's so, it's so exciting. Well, this trailer was a, a really interesting piece to pick for a reveal, too, because it was so narrative heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's the first time they've had a like a cinematic trailer, you know, where it was actually a scene from the game. I know we, they kind of uh, played a little bit of a joke on people with the uh, the Funko Pop game, which <laughs> I think I was the one who was most excited for. I was like, "Yes, Funko Pop!" You love Funko Pop, yeah. <laughs> Don't we? I'm all. excited about it. <laughs> and then and then the the Gears Five trailer came on, and I was like, "Oh, spoilers!" Talking about the end of Gears Four, um, but let's talk about Kate, like, and and where she's at, and how this character really kind of started out as, I mean, dare I use the word, a sidekick, and is <gasps> now like, mm. well, now I is like taking okay, charge, no, no, no. right? I no? wouldn't call is her that, a sidekick. Is that reductive? We don't want to be reductive. No, well, honestly, I mean, the story in 4, <laughs> I'm just going to say it because it's me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the story in 4 was about Kate, you know? I mean, yeah. it, was, it was like Mad Max, you know, where it was a story about Furiosa, but Mad Max was the main character. So it was like right. JD was the main character, but the story was about Kate. So it makes sense that in five we would have brought it back to Kate and now we get to play as her and it's it, it feels really organic to do it that way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we have a couple photos of you oh or my. Kate. <laughs> Not sure. Uh, we'll, we'll give it a second to, uh, to come up, but um, uh, Blizzard also has a lot of fantastic female characters. There she is. Oh, there wow, you are. that's my face. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We actually, this is the first time with the Gears property that we've we've done performance capture. In the past, it's always been voice acting, and then they would do motion capture in another studio. Um, but it's it's so wonderful to get to capture it all at the same time because you really get to embody that character in a way that, mm. I mean, granted, we do this for a living. I know how to embody a character in a in a voice booth, but you can bring so much more when you get to have the mannerisms and look in somebody's eyes as you're, as you're doing a scene with them. It's, it's that wonderful. That does seem fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, what has it meant for you taking this character, you know, who you've been working with now for a little while and seeing her take on this star and road? This is the first time in history that a female character has led this franchise. I mean, that's pretty huge. That's pretty huge. I mean, the characters in Gears, the female characters in Gears have always been strong. I know. That's um, what I've really loved. Yeah. That, they, that their abilities are never locked to the fact that they are, you know, gender identified. No. That, like, they're just as strong and tough as yeah, the Yeah, I mean, in this, in this world of Gears, you know, there's not really sexism or racism in that way. And everybody's equal. Um, and that's something that I've always loved about the franchise. Uh, but I don't know, there was something really emotional when I was watching the trailer, seeing from Kate's perspective, like playing as her and seeing her do all the things that Marcus did and JD did. And it just felt really powerful. And I, I almost started crying when I was watching it because it just felt so good to be represented in that way. 
And this is something that I see a lot in, in Blizzard's communities too, particularly in the Overwatch community. Maybe they're just more vocal than some of the other ones, or maybe those are just the forums oh, they're that all I'm looking vocal. at. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, trust me, yeah. they all have a lot to say. Um, but that the representation matters, and that yes. really kind of ties back to this overall initiative of, of She Talks Games and why you know Facebook is really going out of their way to highlight it because representation yeah. is important. Yeah, I think Overwatch has proved that, that a game that has a... a philosophy of being inclusive you know it's future earth so it is thinking about our cultures and our civilizations and we are bringing in genders and of course robots and different ages and different body types and and uh, yeah the players are telling us they want that and so I think that's very encouraging yeah and I, what I also thought was interesting is that it's not even just, um, it's not even just as you were men mentioning, uh, you know, genders and, and uh, yeah. ages, but like ability as well, exactly. which is something that we don't necessarily think of a lot in representation in games. That's right. Yeah. So ladies, I'm going to look at a couple of our questions here and see what we got um, while I do that. Um, I wanted to ask, how do you feel about kind of where we're at in video games as an industry right now? Obviously, a lot of work has been done in the last couple of years by some really fantastic women to kind of drive the message that we need to be talking about this. Do you think that we still have a long way to go? Do you think that you're comfortable with where we're at? Like, what's the kind of general mood that you're feeling in the business right now? I feel like, I mean, the things that I see come through has only been increasing, you know? Um, and our representation within what's being put out to the fans is definitely much, much higher. The amount of female protagonists have been expanding exponentially. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Carolyn, just before we came out here, said that only a quarter of the people working in the industry are That's female, right. I mean, that, that goes to show how much of a growth there still needs to be. Yeah, my experience, of course, is, is limited to Blizzard, but this is a priority for us. It's a focus, and uh, it's also a national challenge, uh, getting more young girls into STEM. Um, it is uh, more of the engineering ranks where we, we would like to have more representation, um, and uh, yeah, we need the school systems to be part of that, but we also want to um, be supporting that in ways that we can, either locally, nationally, globally. Um, and for the women that we do have, we want it to be a welcoming place. We want to have support systems um, and networking opportunities and career development um, so that the women that are here are empowered to make a great difference for the players, make a great difference for Blizzard. And I think, I mean, over time, it's just going to keep snowballing yes. because the more games have females in them and the more female gamers see themselves, the more they're going to want to introduce themselves into the development process. I love that, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was really great hearing from a lot of the women that are part of Xbox's, Xbox's Women in Gaming team at GDC, the Game Developers Conference, earlier this year, and hearing them on stage kind of spotlighting this idea that, like you mentioned, getting women and young girls really more interested in STEM careers overall. Yes. Because there was this period of time where it was really heavily marketed towards young boys and young girls were never really reached out to. So there was like my whole generation, for example never really thought about a career in, in tech or a career in, in games. And now we have so many great programs. And even hearing, you know, Phil Spencer on stage at DICE earlier this year talking about how we have to lead from the top. Yeah. You know, yes. like that's such an exciting moment to think about how many girls that are coming up now that are actually thinking about, like, maybe I can be an artist at Blizzard or yes. maybe I can be a performance capture artist like Laura, you know? You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> can I do it? You can do it. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> Practice makes perfect, right? <laughs> um, are there any um, young girls in your life that have reached out to you to be like, hey, can you tell me more? About the career, yeah. or about the industry? Or? Yeah, about just about These the industry These chairs are really wide. I keep wanting to lean over. I know, like, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of young girls in my life. That's well, really I've just sad. got uh, my two nieces that I just saw last weekend down in Florida, and they're getting into mobile games and some games like that. Yeah, so I think I'm the cool aunt, if I may. Um, or I, I hope <laughs> to be. I aspire to be. We can call you the cool aunt, be. yeah. <laughs> I got some street cred with them, and when they come visit, they love to jump on the PC with us and play. So, yeah. That's awesome. I do have a question here that I wanted to go to because I thought it was interesting. Uh, so this one is from Jake, and he asks, there are so many male starring superhero and action games. Why aren't there more female action heroines in video games? Where's Batgirl, Wonder Woman, or Black Widow, or even a Red Sparrow, or an Atomic Blonde game? 
Like this is, I think this is a great question, um, but I think it also, like, I mean, look at Wonder Woman in feature film. I yeah. think it's only a matter of time, right? Yeah. These games are clearly somebody's making them somewhere in top secret okay. rooms, right? There's NBA's NBA's and Overwatch, galore. Yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who? Oh yes, Blizzard. Yeah, you yeah. guys. That's what you yelled at. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So which of these characters would you, do you have a personal fave of these that you would like to see? Of these ones I just oh read? Oh man, well I, I voiced Black Widow and I voiced Wonder Woman and Catwoman. Wow. So, so it's like picking between your kids. You know, <laughs> yeah, any, any, really any of them. <laughs> Hire me. <laughs> um, I'm sure you're slated. Your dance <laughs> card is probably full, I, I have to imagine. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's an interesting idea of like the comparison between mm. roles. But I think we are seeing a lot of of roles coming on uh, coming about in the recent years. I mean, one of my personal favorites recently was Aloy from last year, who was awesome. And I swear, yes. it's not just because she has red hair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no bias. Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> but also like this idea of create a character really coming to light in a lot more games than, yeah. we, than we used to see. Um, Lord, you play a lot of RPGs and yeah. even even table. Top, obviously, any critical role fans. Whoa, whoa! Yeah, yeah. Look at all you guys. Do you find yourself gravitating or towards characters that are female, or do you kind of just gravitate towards interesting characters in general? Uh, man, I really do gravitate toward female characters. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, mm -hmm. if if a game is awesome, then yeah, I'm gonna play it regardless of gender. But of course, I mean, if I'm given the choice, uh, I'm gonna create a female character. That is really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, my first love was Diablo 3, and there was a female barbarian. And again, I'm you know, almost six foot two, and she's a huge, strong woman. And yeah. I was like, that's my spirit animal. And yeah, she was, <laughs> she's incredible. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, it, it always comes back to I don't get to see myself uh, on screen very often. So whenever I have the opportunity, I always like to pick characters that look like me. Mm. Even yeah. though um, one of the girls that it does what's good with me, Brittany, she loves to pick like these big hulking dudes, which I think is so funny. <laughs> That's right. She yeah. wants to pick like the biggest, meatiest, tankiest character that she can find. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's great. Plays that Aria then. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's great that women can identify in, in so in so many different ways. Yeah. I mean, we were talking backstage a little bit before we came out here mm -hmm. that what's important to us in the industry is to not always make it about about her and she and, yeah. Yeah, and no. the role, but more about like we're just people in this business together, working together, and hopefully, you know, we'll just see more of us everywhere you go. Yes. That's right. Just whatever serves the story best. Oh great! You know, I love that. It's yes. not a. It's not. It doesn't have to be a guy or a girl. It's just whatever. Whatever. It yeah, calls it for. shouldn't be pandering. It should feel uh, natural. What serves yeah. the story best? I love that. Yeah, I think it comes back to this idea of you know like tokenism. Yeah. Um, and I think what you guys do at Blizzard is really great because it's kind mm -hmm. of like breaking down a lot of those barriers to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, like, how do we get away from this? I mean, how do you guys kind of, you know, what kinds of conversations are you having where you want to, like, kind of drive the conversation away from that? Say that again. How do I drive the conversation away from... Away from, from the idea of tokenism. Uh, well, we just want it to feel authentic and representative. Um, you know, like, with Overwatch is just the most recent example. I mean, we're looking at different parts of the the globe, so we're looking at, you know, different cultures there. We do thinking about different personality types. I mean, it just... I like how you said it. I mean, that brings uh, the story elements that the creators of the games are really looking for. So it's, we, we don't, um, we're not talking intentionally about uh, diversity. We're just talking about great storylines and inclusiveness. And as Jeff Kaplan says, then the result of that is diversity. And, and I love that. So it is, it's about mm -hmm. great story, about great heroes and their interplay and their abilities um, and what they're contributing to the world. Um, and that's really what we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Laura, do you have any like favorite characters that uh, you've seen in the gaming space? None of your own, because that's Aww. cheating. Um, that you kind of point to as like a, I really think that this character is a badass. Uh, Shepard, Commander Shepard. Right? How good <laughs> is Femship? <laughs> totally Femship. Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan. Uh, oh gosh. Oh, no, there are so many. I know, putting you on the spot. I know, right? Oh, goodness gracious. Um, Cassandra from Dragon Age. Um, oh, gosh. 
I'm going to just keep thinking about them in my brain. You think then, about it. And they'll just randomly say Shout them as out. you guys keep talking about other things. Sarah yeah, Lynn, like do that. you have any that you always kind of go to and go, this is a, an example of a, a character that I think is really fantastic? Well, I guess it's the archetype I think about a lot. Um, so again, I mentioned the female barbarian in Diablo. Um, I do love playing melee in World of Warcraft. So it's like the energy. Oh, I got some shout outs there. Yeah. So it's it's the archetype. It's the you know, chaotic, neutral, sort of, um, those those are the roles that I look for, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting talking to different kinds of women in the business about just how, how diverse the opinions about games are, because I think a lot of times when, you know, you hear this... Ellie! <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Sorry, okay. She was on stage yesterday. <laughs> um, it's, it's fine, just continue to blurt them out. Yeah. It, makes, <laughs> it makes the panel better. <laughs> Um, no, what I was what I was mentioning was just like this idea of like you know in the air quotes like girl gamer and how that mm. means something different to, to so many different. <laughs> Wait, no, did you have something you were gonna say out there? <laughs> oh, oh, no, oh you, okay. No, you don't get to shout yeah. them out. <laughs> she gets to shout them out. She's on the panel. <laughs> but I appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> Samus is great. Um, but this idea of like how this term girl gamer has kind of, kind of been co-opted and turned into this evil thing. And I, I think we should take it back. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Should we take it back ladies? Let's take it back. Um, <laughs> but what's, what uh, my point was with that is like this, how everyone's experience growing up and being a gamer is different. Like I think back to like how mm -hmm. I grew up and how I think about, I didn't have a group of women that I played games with. And right. when we talk to our fans that listen to What's Good Games, because we're an all-female podcast, and we get so many women reaching out to us and saying, like, I never had that experience, and you guys are, like, my first time, like, having somebody I can relate to. You know, it kind of, like, not only does it, like, hit us in the feels, of course, but, like, it, you stop to think about how, yeah, there's a lot of girls out there that maybe feel like they're alone. Mm. Do you guys get people that reach out to you with any similar stories or do you have, you know, any experiences with people that have come up to you and said like, hey, what you do really means something to me? I get a lot of that with, with Critical Role um, with people that, you know, because in the same way that, that video games can feel kind of isolated for women, tabletop gaming can feel that same way. Mm. So there's been a lot of girls that have come up and said, you know, it's really good to see girls sitting at the table and, and just yeah. being normal and treated the exact same. And that's what it is about, you know? <laughs> right? No, that's we can applause. applaud for yeah. that. I'll answer this a little differently. I mean, I was, uh, I played video games. We had them at our house from my, my big brother loved to play. We was part of our family, but we were also all athletes. We're all six foot and above. And um, so to me, I more identified as an athlete, but that has a expiration. I'm 33, I retired, and my knees are kind of ruined, and, but I still <laughs> want to compete, and I still want to be part of a team. So, like, raiding in World of Warcraft gives me an emotional thing that I otherwise wouldn't have in my, la my life right now, and it's the same thing where I get sweaty palms, and I don't want to blow it for the team, and I don't want to wipe <laughs> the raid, and of course I do sometimes, and I'm mad at myself, so I want to go back and practice, and all those things I'm describing are the same thing you feel as an athlete in sports, in traditional sports, and so, uh, for me, um, yeah, gaming has been that great bridge now for these, you know, post-retirement, uh, sports retirement years, and uh, it's been really meaningful to me. Yeah, I always love hearing from people. It's, you know, it's moments, I, I think it's like my pin tweet on my account that's just like, in the moments that we all get bogged down in the work, when you're feeling tired and you're like, oh, what am I doing? I'm so stressed out that that one person just reaches out to you and says, hey, like yeah. the representation that you're doing in the industry means something to me that reminds me like, oh yeah, there's people out there that, right. that this really means something for. Yeah. So I, I actually have seen a couple tweets about like how much it means to see Kate as the protagonist in Absolutely. Gears 5 and All right. how yeah. cool it is to see that representation and for female Gears fans how amazing that is to you know have that experience suddenly it's right because the fans of cool. the franchise have been around it's been so many years yeah. now. and there are a lot of female Gears fans so it's nice to, to mm. have that for them especially since it's one of the few franchises I think not to not to give the Gears team too much love. We gotta try to keep it objective over here. <laughs> um, but um, how that franchise in particular has always you know, said we're gonna put them all on a, on a level playing field and thank you for never having like absurd bikini armor. 
Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's armor. <laughs> you know? I don't want my midriff <laughs> exposed in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. Uh, unless I do it intentionally, and then I do it because I want to. Okay? <laughs> That's, a, that's an important thing. Uh, agency <laughs> is the word I always go back to. Mm. Um, I do want to grab another one of these questions, um, which is, you know, kind of an, kind of an interesting one, I think, um, because, um, I, and you can tell me how you feel about it. Okay, this one's from Aiden. Um, what are your thoughts on changing history to fit the current generation of progression? For example, Battlefield 5 has inserted the option to fight as a woman on the front line for both the Axis and the Allies, when in fact that never happened in the U.S. or British Armed Forces. Hmm. This was a big deal when Battlefield right. announced this the other day. Mm -hmm. um, I personally was like, it's all fantasy. fantasy. What are you upset about? <laughs> 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 right? Yeah. But uh, I wanted to put it to you two. Do you guys have specific, specific thoughts about altering history to... Um, you know, on the behalf of diversity? I mean, is it fun? Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm all, I'm all for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I leave the game designers, I want them to feel like they have integrity to their story the best that they can. And uh, again, it is, it is fantasy, but... Yeah, and I think something that, you know, we talk about when we talk about the, you know, She Talks Games initiatives and some of the developers and the interviews that we've done with all kinds of women in the industry, we kind of all come back to the same thing that, you know, obviously we want to not shoehorn in diversity if it doesn't feel right, but at a certain point, if we don't take the step forward and make the conscious choice to include it, who's going to do it? Right. Right, we're still in the building process of getting more people inside these studios around the world, whether it be big or small, at the publisher, at the hardware makers, whoever. Right, we're still in that phase of where we're trying to attract more voices to the industry. And until then, I think if there's somebody who's willing to do it, why not? Who cares if it doesn't make sense? Right. Who cares if someone with pink hair didn't exist in 1942? Why can't they? Mm. <laughs> right? Have you seen Wonder Woman? I mean, come on. There yeah. were women. Yes, I have. Many there times. There were women yeah. in war. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, we already went... Uh, we already went over our favorite characters, so I'm not going to ask that one. Um, <laughs> this is a good one from Jamie. What do you believe is the next step for women's inclusion in the video game industry? Not just how they are portrayed in actual games. From the employment side? Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure I have the answer to that, but I hope just socializing more what roles are available. I mean, what are your skill sets? Again, I came to Blizzard and I'd never worked in the games industry before. I did a couple of um, long-term contracts with them and got my foot in the door, got to know people, fell in love with their culture and the stories and the games, and I guess they got to know me too. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I think there's just there's a lot of opportunities. Um, in fact, more of the employee base at Blizzard is in the support of the games than the creation of the games. So, um, yeah, I think just knowing that there's opportunities out there, look for them and uh, and apply. That's what that's what I think too. <laughs> <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll let you have that one. Well, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for coming out here and chatting with me today. Laura, thank you for giving us a nice little look at Kate. I can't yes, wait to exciting. play her. <laughs> um, and if you guys want to learn more, Facebook has a fantastic set of resources. Just look for that hashtag, she talks games. There's also the hashtag, Women in Gaming, that the Xbox team has put together. They have a fantastic Twitter account. Always retweeting job opportunities for any ladies out there who are looking to get into the games business. And um, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week here at E3. Thanks so much. <laughs> Woo. All right.